Major support for these broadcasts is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's window company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, MNT Bank. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, All Nation Renovation, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Capital One Bank, Cassidy Turley, C.B. Richard Ellis, James Orphanides, Centurion Holdings, Chelsea Lighting, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova, Burns and Gian Tomasi, Investors Bank, Jack Jaffa and Associates, Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Corman Communities, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, The Wickoff Group, Urban American, Ackman Ziff Real Estate, Eastern Consolidated, Goldman Properties, The Moynian Group, Mus Development, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group, LLC, Triangle Equities. So we have restaurants, we have chefs, but, but you know, we have arenas. These arenas have never, never in their life had good food. They've had food, Harry M. Stevens, they've had Needix when he was a kid. They had food which was unedible. But today, some of the arenas, specifically Madison Square Garden, has gone to the next level and are bringing in top-notch restaurateurs, celebrity chefs to run their facilities. My guests today include Phil Suarez, who's the CEO of the Suarez Restaurant Group. Luke Ostrom, who is the Mavericks Group, uh, Locanda Grande, the Dutch, and the Dutch, which is opening up in Miami. Uh, Mark Losserman, who is Hill Country Hospitality, which is Hill Country Chicken and Hill, Ch Hill Country Barbecue. And last but not least, the man who always puts these shows together for me, the, the, the true executive producer, the winner of the Stoller Report Telly Award, oh, yeah. the infamous... Okay, Drew and the Porin, the Myriad Restaurant Group, Corton, everything, you know, you name it. So Thank you, Mike. why are these, is the real reason that the garden is going to have good food because of you, Suarez, and you? Well, uh, Madison Square Garden is the world's greatest arena. So why not have great food? That's what they're doing. What, took them, so, I, what uh, took them so long, guys? Well, I think economics, probably economics. And the fact is now they're in the middle of a, a, a close to a billion dollar rehab of the arena. And uh, Phil uh, has been probably a ticket holder in a, uh, a... Since 1969. Exactly. And I remember my Geo ticket somewhere around that. Way up there. <laughs> right. Like Bill, uh, Bob Yuka and front right. row and... <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> Bob Yuka seats. So I think... Um, uh, our relationships help pave the way to a certain extent for the garden to realize that food is an attraction, just like uh, when they have a concert. They have so, yeah, these, these, these guys at the garden, are real, they're smart guys. We all know that. And, you know, it, 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 it doesn't take a smart guy to realize the country has it's become a food nation. And they understand how important food is. And now they've taken this venture to spend almost a billion dollars on this new, new, new arena. Ticket prices have gone up because somebody has to pay for it. So... The garden thought one of the things we're going to, at least we're going to give these folks a bang for their buck. And so one of the, one of the positions they've taken is to uh, improve the food uh, itself. And that's what, they've, so, so that's what they're doing. What are, what are they bringing? I, you know, I read the press release. I've seen the articles. What are they bringing to the garden? What are you going to have? What's Luke going to have? What's Mark going to have? 
and him, we have no idea. Be, uh, a burger, I think, for him. But I think basically uh, it's important to understand, Michael, that Madison Square Garden actually runs their own food service. They have their own company. So when they made a decision to bring in certain marquee chefs, like uh, Luke's partner, uh, Andrew Carmelini, they own La Condoverde of the Dutch, uh, he's designing, well, I should let you talk about it. Uh, We're doing a, a sausage concession called Sausage Boss. Uh, two sandwiches. One is a, a classic take on an Italian sausage, a custom blend of a sweet and hot blend sausage with uh, pizzaioli style, peppers, onions, a little stewed tomato. Uh, Never do you bring anything to my studio. Okay, I know. Yeah. I, I should have brought it today for you. I'm and getting... Phil's partner is the famous chef Jean George von Gerichten, and Phil's doing. We're doing a concept called Simply Kitch uh, uh, Simply Chicken. Uh, and we're going to be doing a, uh, a healthier version of the chicken, uh, of the hot dog. Uh, we'll be doing a chicken hot dog. We'll be doing a chicken salad, all organic. And we'll be doing a, uh, a, a chicken sandwich, also organic. Yeah, and they've tapped me to do uh, the hamburger. And we've designed something specifically for Madison Square Garden. And that one will be branded the Daily Burger because every day we can change the garnishes. And in fact, if you behave, we'll name one of the hamburgers after you, Michael. You, you should. Now, uh, my, my main man over here, uh, Mark from uh, Hill Country, because his restaurant is so uh, important as a food uh, destination in New York, the garden reached out to him, and he will actually well I'll let so, you discuss it. So, um, so we're so Hill Country Barbecue. We're actually going to have a concession on the main concourse when the garden gets renovated and, and it opens up. Um, and we're gonna have to do two barbecue sandwiches. We're actually gonna provide all the, the food ourselves that we're gonna smoke on premise at our restaurant. And then bring it bring over. Bring it over. We're doing a uh, chopped barbecue brisket sandwich. Brisket's one of our signature products we do at Hill Country. Uh, we're also doing a smoked hand-carved prime rib sandwich with the au jus sauce. Um, and then from our other sister restaurant, Hill Country Chicken, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, have pies, again, that we make. On pies, pies but not bakery. not chicken because the, the, this is the chicken man now. This yeah, is chicken, uh, but I'm we have we have these um, little uh, we call them pie cups. Which sort of they're our, great. Our they're great. Uh, let, let me let me tell you, I we've had a ta we've had some tastings and we had a, a, a pretty large tasting a couple of weeks ago, and I can I can tell you these these folks have put out a heck of a product. Now, now are these products going to be? You said in the general area, are are your products going to be available to any? Patron of the garden, or are they oh, are absolutely. The sweets, the, or are they these these uh, items that we're talking about right now are, are concession. There'll be there'll be concessions from the sixth to the eleventh floor, and so uh, we'll probably have a half a dozen uh, concessions throughout Location. the arena of okay. various right. uh, the sausages, the hamburgers, the chickens, the barbecues. So it's yeah. and I think it's going to be all over the place. Multiple multiple kind of points of um, points of purchase for their concession. We have a single concession that's going to be on the, on the main concourse. I think Carnegie Deli is also uh, yep. going to be, be in there. Magnolia Bakery, their cupcakes is going to be in. So they've really, you know, across the board. And, and what about the, the traditional arena food? Is that going to still be? Well, they'll have their, their, their traditional yeah. staple. You'll still have their, their hot dogs, their, their popcorn, popcorn. and Cracker Jacks. I mean, they sell, and that that's, that's part of, that's the core. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to tell you, I, I took a, a tour last week of the garden. And it's not the garden we know, guys. Uh, it, it was just off the charts. The, the, the width of the corridors, the, just, just amazing. The colors, the textures. Uh, it's not an arena that you'll, you'll, and, you've and ever are, seen. And, and you know, for the general customer, what is the pricing going to be of your product and your product within the, uh, the garden? Well, as, as the, uh, the tickets uh, seats have gone up uh, considerably, the pricing of the food has not. Uh, it's pretty comparable to what uh, and we, we, we in kind of in help uh, insist on that uh, as a group that, you know, we want to give value for, for our product. So, so, the, so and the garden has gone along with us, and they've kept it uh, pretty much to where it was. I think if you go, for instance, to Yankee Stadium uh, on opening day, it was, you know, obviously everyone's fixated on baseball, but there was the butcher, LaBelle. They literally have a butcher window like they do on Madison Avenue. And there was uh, the guy slicing prime rib, and that was $15 a sandwich. And that might have seemed steep, but th quite frankly, they gave you like a huge amount of prime rib, which I'm sure Mark's going to be doing with Hill Country. Uh -oh. uh, in the area that. of the hamburger, uh, we're trying to price it, you know, uh, either nine or ten dollars. So uh, it's all what Phil just so, so mentioned. So we're not it's, it's we're, we're not going to a pricing of a, of twenty dollars for a hamburger. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a market price that you would be talking about if you went into 
a restaurant or something with a quality of a certain... There's no shock value here. It'll, yeah. it'll, right. it'll, it's it's comparable. It's comparable. So yeah, yeah, I, I mean, the, the interesting <laughs> situation is if you go to the stadium and you go to City Field, the pricing at the stadium is nearly double what City Field is. In, in the regular, forget the low bellas pricing. You mean uh, Shake Shack? No, no. I'm talking about the general concessions going to uh, at at City Field versus Yankee Stadium. The pricing is double. The pricing for a beer, the pricing for a hamburger, the pricing for a soda. I, I think certain arenas have uh, made uh, economic arrangements with food service companies where you know everyone's sort of splitting the revenue so they have to charge more there's also the unions that are involved in some of the traditional arrangements yankee stadium does their own for food service madison square garden does their own food service so they've sort of cut out that that arrangement and therefore perhaps the prices can be a little more now I, and I don't think one of the other things it, it, city field you've got shake shack and blue smoke there are items that you can get at their other restaurants in the city and for those guys you don't want to have something that's so it's price that the differential in pricing is so much more at the stadium. People are used to paying a premium for a product, but you know a Shake Shack burger in Madison Square Park shouldn't be you know that much less expensive than it is at the stadium. Although people are accustomed to there being higher pricing. Do you see? Okay, this is the the uh, the Garden. You know, depending on what happens with the strike, no matter what, hockey is going to be played over there this season. So when it when is this going to be implemented? When are this week? So so in October. This week, for some of the some of the venues, uh, I would say December uh, would be full blown. Yeah, they're launching in stages. The whole transformation is taking course over the over three years. So, I think all of us, uh, you have your one stand, but the three of us are doing uh, a few stands this year. Another stand or two next. When when the when the, the additional year, renovations. It's a three year. Pro uh, exactly. Now, project. do you, do you believe that the product line will be increased over the? I mean, will will you have more products maybe perhaps in a year from now? Will they change, will they increase the menus? I'm not talking about the prices. I'm saying the, the amount of products. That, it, it, I mean, because, because all of you run great operations that you can have more than just a limited product in the chicken or the burgers, okay, or the sausage or... I think the market. sky's the limit as long as the reaction of the guests is yeah. positive. It's all about the supply, uh, about demand. Yeah. It's about demand. We'll be doing, well, we, uh, John George and I will also be doing the sweets. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting. They so, so you're going to. So can someone get <laughs> the regular garden sweet food, or is it all John George and your sweet I, I, food? I, th I, I don't mean to. No, please. Interrupt, but I think regular food is what they're designing. In other words, he's not plugging in John George uh, or spice market items, although there would be the influence of those items. Yes. But but the, most of the the sweet food has to be mainstream because that's essentially what people yeah. are used to. No, no I agree, but, uh, you know, the the hot dogs or the chicken fingers, which sometimes go to the sweets, are you going to be handling all that product? Uh, no, um, not really. We'll be doing a, a menu that, uh, as Drew said, that people understand, the uh, American fare, for lack of a better word, that uh, you'll be able to get as a supplement. Uh, that's that's exactly what in, I'm saying. Uh, in the sweets and in uh, the Delta Club. Um, yeah, um, we have a little. Would the Delta Club be similar to what you have now? Well, it, yeah, at, I was going to say um, at City Field, uh, Danny Meyer, myself, uh, David Pasternak. I didn't do the Delta, but we have the Acela. You have the Acela Club, Club which but again, is we designed when a I restaurant. Was there a couple months ago. Thank you, thank you, Mike. We designed a restaurant specific for City Field, so uh, the Delta Club uh, Phil's uh, seen the garden. I'm actually going on Wednesday, and oh, I yeah. think they're going to have our food mm -hmm. on Wednesday yeah. for a John Legend. Uh, event and so it'll be the interesting to see because you know the garden's not ready it's not open except for the the ranger games i think maybe even tonight there's a ranger game on range no 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 range is the 23rd yeah. uh, no the 26th or 27th but the, okay. they will yeah. be open for yeah. the ranger uh, game that's thursday not, night that's thursday. but some of our food you know they're still in construction so uh, a lot of what we plan to do is not going to debut until they'll be doing concerts for the next no, 10 days and then then the rangers come in and Are you cooking already over there? We're we're gonna we have pies going over there. I think for this for event for Wednesday. Now, so here is my question: The Garden is the, the the world's most famous arena over there. Do you know in 2012, uh, Brooklyn is going to have an arena? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that 
Unfortunately, I don't believe the arena is going to be able to have hockey because they made it large enough but not large enough to take hockey, uh, which they should have because they could move from New Jersey. Do you believe that oh. arenas like that will follow this approach and put quality chefs, owners, restaurateurs in there? I, I think so. I, I think the you know, uh, as Phil was saying before, the you know people that go to sporting events now sort of expect, especially with the increased ticket prices, to have a full experience when they go. And food culture has become so predominant in America today, uh, wherever you are, in your, in your home, when you go out to eat, when you go to a sporting event. I think a lot of the new transformations in arenas or the new arenas and stadiums they build from ground up uh, probably expect to put a decent food and beverage program in place. I think there's, there's an expectation of always wanting the traditional hot dog and the soft pretzel and the popcorn and the Cracker Jacks, but the ability to bring in name celebrity chefs, uh, name uh, restaurateurs to be able to bring additional products uh, is, is he, 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 yes. what people want, I think. Well, I think, I think uh, I agree with Luke, and I, I think that there's no coincidence that in New York City, in five years, you're going to have pretty much every professional sports team in New York is going to have a new home. Yankee Stadium, City Field, the new Meadowlands, you know, in Brooklyn, the new arena, and the renovated garden. And, uh, you know, I think that there is an element of sort of keeping up with the Joneses with the new, you know, the upgraded physical surroundings. You want to sort of commensurate food and beverage experience to go with it. Um, and I think, there's a, I think there's a natural linkage between sort of the rise in food culture and, and the rise of the food network and what that's done for celebrity chefs. But, but, and but here, here's a big question. And but, Phil has done this, you know, working at the Bellagio for years, you know, bringing the food over there. How people know of your restaurants. They know of the quality. They, they, they run, they, they, they want your food. That's why the garden wants you. That's why they brought you in. How do you, because in reality, with the exception of you, your people, you cook it. In the garden, you, you supervise, you gave them the menus, but sometimes, you know, maybe the Aramac, maybe I'm thinking in general because of some other stadiums or arenas, they don't, how do you bring the same quality that you can have that they know when they go to the Dutch or local ground? They, you know, how, how do a they? fair question. I mean, uh, Michael, it, 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 maybe the best example is um, when a Broadway show goes on the road. 100%. And, and, but, you know, cooking food. Summer stock is uh, sometimes not food as... Food for a mass audience is not an easy thing, even if it's a single item. So we have to supervise this thing, but we also have to believe that our reputations, to a certain degree, are on the line. So, you know, we're going to... We, we care but, what but the you, final but, product is. But you know what? Be. When I went to City Field and I went to the Acela Club, you had your people there and you were there, I mean, watching baseball in addition, right. but you had your people there supervising. Well, I think that's critical. That, that's critical. Mostly watching day. baseball. <laughs> Him? No, no, mostly eating. When, when it came uh -huh. to the Mets, there wasn't a whole no, lot of watching this year. But, no, in fairness, I think the Wilpons took a, a real interest in wanting to do a better uh, food product. The Madison Square Garden is, is, you know, really put it out there. We are food professionals. We sort of know the logistics. It's not just about being able to create a good product. It's being able to create a good product under the exactly. logistics. And both that parties, the both about. parties know, you know, uh, the difficulty of achieving this. So they've been they've been open to sending their folks to our places, and we've been uh, able to train them as yeah, best yeah, we but can. You know, he brought up something mm -hmm. which is a terminology that happens in New York City quite a bit. It was called unions, and. I don't know if the food people working at this, these places are going to be union. And sometimes, you know, there's a difference when your restaurants, which may be or may not be union, which in most cases are not union, it's a different situation with the type of labor. I mean, you, yeah. you, you may be bringing in people, but, the, you know, the quality the, supervision, is, I believe, is the, the key. You know, I, I think, well, first of all, we, I think we're all excited about the opportunity to get our food out in front of a much you know, big, bigger audience, but there is a risk that I think that we're all aware of in, in, in doing it, and part of what you know, we bring as food professionals is professional training and having that supervision and you know, taking, uh, you know, uh, whether it's a unionized employee or of, of the garden or not, and, and trying to transfer those skills to them. But... There's going to be some some very direct supervision that we're going to have to bring to it, and it's going to take time. But at the end of the day, if somebody has a bad barbecue sandwich at the garden, 
as much as that's an opportunity, it's also, you know, that, that reflects it's a risk. It's, it's a, yes, risk. a risk. We also spend a lot of time, you know, the development and testing process. You know, when we put together uh, the different recipes for different dishes that will be served at a place like the garden, we would do things like test out the amount of time it could sit in the vessel that it's sitting in and the amount of time that also it the, would logistics. Take the, the logistics the logistics and you know what I mean, that's, that's a question the with regard a totally different in a concession than, 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 than opening a full blown restaurant now but here's the question logistics you know in the garden when you go to an arena you are able to get a hot dog you know through a person walking around are they going to be able to buy a burger from you, or is it going to be at the, the it's concession? It's going to be at the concession. I think, you know, we all believe that it would be better to keep it at the concession because I, I, I concur. Pressure product, yeah. you're able to yeah. make yeah. it a yeah. little bit yeah. closer to order as opposed to walking around for an you hour. You won't have guys walking around with that. You, you actually bring up the, the smartest thing because the idea is like fine idea. It's the implementation of the idea and the carry through and the fulfillment. But we we walk the walk and we talk the talk. It's not our first rodeo. We've done this before. Mm -hmm. I uh, I did in 1972 when I was a quarter pound grown man at McDonald's. So I th I think I, I understand logistics around what I'm going to do. And I've tasted all of their products. And then I, I I'm excited about the quality. Now it's going to be a question of Execution. can we produce this? Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I I have 100 percent confidence. This so, is going to work you know, for sure. Here is something, as, as Drew and you know, uh, my show. You know, I don't. Sometimes we're a little controversial, but I'm not a food critic. I'm not Frank Bruni. I'm, and I, one day, some food critic is going to review your food at the garden. Well, they, mm -hmm. yes, they and did that, it at City Field. And, okay, sure. and what happens when you, uh, be realistic, it's having that prima donna, who, uh, you know, who's going to make that decision, who sometimes could be biased. You know? That's okay. Well, we we believe I we believe, if I right. may speak for you guys. We believe we're bringing we're bringing a great product to the garden. And and, and so the, the notion of having a food review, just a critic at a sports arena, that's that's pretty yeah. amazing. Right. The, the, it's even worthy of a food critic's attention. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, so I mean, this is what we do on a daily basis. You know, critics are always welcome on in our doors, and that's the so way. That's it, part it, of our life. Here, here's an interesting thing. Each one of you have your own operation. I mean, your food is similar because you, it's what you cook right now. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to different products which you really don't have today. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with these ideas to implement the Drew Burger, okay, or or the special? I mean, think about it. That's the fun of that's I, I, no, the reasons I, I, no, we're I'm, doing it. No, I'm asking. I think a lot of it comes down to you know when we uh, go into this, we think about what type of food we would want to eat when we're sitting down and watching an event in the arena, uh, whether it's a great burger or it's a great chicken sandwich or for people who want something lighter like the salad that you guys are doing or a sausage uh, or barbecue. Uh, the process, I think, of developing all that stuff came from the inspiration of, of what we would want to eat. And then, you know, we were throughout the testing coming up with dishes that would work. And to go back to your point about how to execute it properly, I think a lot of time was taken to figure out how to streamline the recipes and uh, make it very specific and put the time and the training in with the chefs that are in place uh, to be able to deliver exactly what we tested. How much supervision are you going to have? I mean, physically, people over there watching over the preparation and so on. Well, if they give us an all-access pass to get in, I'll be there quite a bit. Yeah, yeah I know you. Hopefully you know, this no, we're going we're we're to be there. We're going to be there. We're going to be yeah. there. We're going to. I, I, on. I, I'm at the Meadowlands uh, for the Jets and the Giants. I do a guest chef program. In fact, Hill Country did a splendid job last night um, in the area known as the Commissioners Club. It's a little different at the the, the the football because a lot of the tickets, the food is included. Right. So even those people expect. A superior product and that's why they asked me to even bring in name chefs in addition to the food service that they already have there so the the, uh, the analogy of Las Vegas where gaming was flat and they wanted to figure out what other attractions they could bring in and they brought in name chefs at the Bellagio at the Venetian now every single hotel all the new hotels are all bringing in cosmopolitan brand. Yeah. exactly right mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's you know uh, Phil and John George were uh, really pioneers in that area because the, to make these relationships is not easy. We're partnering with uh, big businesses with a lot of money at stake. So even in this endeavor, they're expecting a lot from us. But again, we're professional. We're going to deliver the goods. And if you think about it from the you know uh, from the arena's perspective, from the team's perspective, as the stakes you know grow, 
how do you attract people into the arena? Food has become entertainment, the way that sports, you know, is, is entertainment. And, you know, it's interesting also that sort of over the sort of the, the past five years or the advent of the home theater HD TV experience that you can have for watching games is another, you know, reason for somebody to not necessarily be motivated to get out to an arena. You can have smell a vision next? Well, you know, <laughs> but, you know. But, 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 you know, think about, you know, now if my team's not doing so great and not having a great season, but I know, you know what, I'm going to go there, I'm going to have a great time, and there's all this terrific food there. It's just another motivating factor to get somebody it's out of there. Look at City Field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they eat. They can't Absolutely. watch the game. People are excited and, about And they it. bring their family. I mean, sure. it's a real opportunity to continue to diversify and uh, be able to deliver food product to a lot of people. I think on a, on a given good day, you know, a really strong day, we could do seven, eight hundred covers on a, a full day on a weekend, which is a huge number of covers. You know, the Madison Square Garden is about 20,000 seats, I think 320 active days a year in that. Right, and, uh, and you're, you're, you're not only, you're, avail you're going to be at the Garden whenever it's open. Whenever I it's mean, open. You know, the circus, it's, it's, you know, the concerts. Beyond, it's beyond the Knicks it's, it's, what, it's not limited. Little con convention. Right. It's, it's, every event, type, it's every event that's going to be over there. Mm -hmm. It's truly an iconic space. It's an, it's an opportunity to be able to do food service for tons of different people that come in from all over the world. Uh, for lots of different reasons. And the, the previous headset was, we can do it ourselves, we can do it better. But uh, then when they tried to make the pastrami sandwich, it was a pedestrian pastrami sandwich. Now you're going to have Carnegie Deli, which arguably is, you know, this iconic uh, New York item that is coming to you at, a, at an arena. It's going to be rendered properly. And also uh, one of our colleagues, Jeremy Marshall, is doing a, a lobster roll. That'll probably be the most expensive item, Michael. But uh, Jeremy's had Aqua Grill in Soho for many, many years. And, you know, so the garden specifically came out for the best people. Now, what about do you see perhaps, uh, I mean, the arena in Newark, uh, the Prudential Center is a magnificent facility. Um, they don't attract that many. No, 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 no I mean, do, do you see other arenas reaching out to people like Phil or to you or to, to Mark Absolutely. in this situation? No, I mean, let's see. We, we, we have I mean, let's, out let, well, let's, let's We have a non-compete, but no, no, I'm not going to Right. Yeah, but we've had talking we've had about since with, well, We had a conversation with the Meadowlands. We had a conversation with, with the Nets. I mean, I think that all of the arenas are looking, you know, across the board at how how do how do we upgrade the experience? They start to yeah, but see I also the think success of the other arenas. They, you know, City Field was uh, I, it's successful in its idea to bring food from New York restaurants and. Yeah, I think Madison Square Garden will be the same. I would imagine other arenas and stadiums will start yeah, to see that and want well, to. Well, Chicago, that in. you know, I mentioned that Larry Levy is really a, a, a precursor to yeah, even so this started. because in Chicago, you know, they upgraded the food service and, and, and uh, Larry Levy deserves a lot of credit for, you know, putting out a better product. I don't. I also, I don't believe any of us. I'll, I'll speak for myself, but I, I don't think we, we took this on as a business uh, uh, model to, to, you know, let's do this and we're going to do it all across the country. I, I thought we, I, I know, uh, speaking for myself and John George, uh, I'm doing it because I've been, I've been at the, I think I was born at the garden. Okay. And it's just yeah. part of my. None of us are going to get rich doing this. Right. Is what Phil you, you know, wait, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, 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 I, and I believe that is something that's important to bring out. Yeah. That this is not. We love our city. This is not your main business. Your main business is the operation of your restaurants where you operate today. This is, and it. You know, if you make a couple of dollars, fine, but that's not the major thing. Right. It's to really, to, to make the best arena in the world have the best food. That's right. And for that reason, I'm really happy you're here today, and I hope that you invite me, and I'll be there. One day he'll bring me some food. I'd like to thank Phil Suarez, Luke Ostrom, Mark Osserman, and last but not least, Drew. Take care. Thank you. See you next week. Okay.